Hi, welcome back. And this is a, a very important video on the doofus problem solving method. So if I call you a doofus, it means that you probably should have used this problem solving strategy in your kinematic solutions. So let's go on and figure out what doofus stands for. So follow these steps in every problem that we do. Sometimes it looks a little bit different, but we'll always follow these steps in any physics problem that we're going to solve. First off, D is for diagram. Draw a picture. Very important. It doesn't have to be beautiful. As you know, my drawing is not wonderful, so yours doesn't really need to be wonderful either. It just needs to help you uh, visualize the problem and identify the key uh, points of um, the problem. We need to list our units and variables for the problem. Uh, a number without a unit is not very useful. Uh, and we're going to write down the formula or the equation that we're going to use and we're going to solve for the variable that we're interested in before we substitute numbers. Then we're going to do the uh, substitution, the algebra, and we're going to show the numbers and the units at the very end. I don't require you to put the units in the intermediate steps, but I do require you to put the units with your final answer. And then your solution is circled and identified. Uh, I need to know what your answer is, and the only way I really can tell sometimes is when you circle it. Okay, let's go on for an example, and I will go through all the steps. This is a fairly simple problem, but I'm still going to use all the steps. We have a body moving with uniform acceleration, and it has a velocity of 12 meters per second in the positive direction when its x-coordinate is 3 meters. If the x-coordinate 2 seconds later is negative 5 meters, what is the magnitude of the acceleration. Doofus, I'm going to diagram my situation. So I have a body. I'm going to just draw a circle or a point. It has a velocity of 12 meters per second in that direction. And this is at uh, zero seconds. and uh, the x-coordinate is 3 meters. And 2 seconds later, its x-coordinate is negative 5 meters. So 2 seconds later, it's over here, and this is at 2 seconds, and its uh, coordinate is negative 5 meters. So, what do you think is going on here? Well, I think it's moving this way, slowing down, and it has to turn around and come back the other direction. I think that's right. Well, let's see if uh, our equation solution goes along with that. That's kind of help me figure out uh, what I'm going to use for my variables. There are six variables in kinematics that we will deal with. There's initial position. There's initial velocity. There's the acceleration. There's the final position. There's the final velocity. And there's the time interval. And we need to read our problem and determine what quantities we know to start with, what quantities we're looking for, and what quantities we really don't care about. They have no place in our problem. So I'm going to start off. Do we know what our initial position is? Well, it says that we are at a position of 3 meters. So 3.0 meters. And when we're at that position, we have an initial velocity of 12 meters per second. 
And do we know what the acceleration is? Well, no, that's actually what we're being asked for. So I'm going to put a question mark there, and I'm going to underline it. It means that I don't know, but I'm looking for it. Do we have a final position? Well, reading our problem says that we have a final position of negative 5. Do we know what our final velocity is? Uh, I can't find it in the question, so I'm going to put a question mark there, meaning that I don't know. And then, do we have a time interval? Well, two seconds later, that sounds like that's my time interval. So two seconds. Okay, so notice I have two unknowns. One of them I care about, acceleration. One of them I don't care about, final velocity. So the method is to look for one of the kinematics equations that does not have final velocity in it. And there's really only one that I know of. And that's the third kinematics equation, which is x equals x0 plus v0t plus 1 half acceleration times the time interval squared. And we're looking for the acceleration. I find it best, and I know it's not uh, possibly what you're used to in math class, but I find it best to solve for variables. Do the algebra on the variables. You end up making fewer mistakes. And later on, uh, you'll find out that sometimes the variables disappear in the math, which is a good thing because you may not have had that information. And if you did the algebra and numbers, you would never really know um, when things mysteriously disappear. Okay, and we'll see examples of that later on. Okay, so I'm going to do the algebra to solve for acceleration. So I have to isolate acceleration. And the way that I do that is I subtract x0 from both sides. I subtract v0t from both sides. Okay, so I'm going to do the intermediate step here. So I have x minus x0 minus v0t, and that is equal to 1 half a t squared. Now I'm going to divide by 1 half, which is the same as multiplying by 2, and I'm going to divide by t squared. Okay, so that's the same as multiplying by 1 over t squared. And I need to do that to both sides. So I'm going to multiply by 2 over t squared. And that will leave behind acceleration. So now I have to distribute and solve. Okay, so I have acceleration is equal to 2 over t squared times x minus 2 over t squared times x0 minus 2 over t squared times uh, v0t. And I can substitute in now. I'm going to eliminate that t and that squared and substitute in my numbers. I have 2 over 2 squared, which is 4, times x, which was negative 5. Be careful with your signs. Make sure you include them. Minus 2 over t squared, which is 2 over 4 times x0, which is 3, minus 2 over t, so that's 2 over 2, which is 1, and v0, so it's minus 12. Now we do the arithmetic. 
1 half times 5. Uh, 1 half times negative 5 is negative 2.5. 1 half times 3 minus 1 half times 3 is negative 1.5 minus 12. Now we add that all up. 2.5 and 1.5 is 4 and 12 is 16. Negative 16 meters per second squared. Final step, the S part of the doofus is circling my answer. Negative 16 meters per second squared. Now you can see this uh, I wrote down a lot of steps. I wrote down the algebra. Okay, now I think I have a problem for you. So let's take a look at that. Okay, questions. There's a free response question about a jet plane and then a multiple choice uh, question. Uh, please do this on paper and follow the, the doofus method. Uh, review the video. Uh, to make sure that you include all the steps. You're going to make a diagram. You're going to uh, identify your units and variables. You're going to uh, come up with an a, equation, a formula, and you're going to do the algebra on it to solve for a single variable that you're looking for, substitute and solve. Good luck.